All right, electrochemistry voltaic cells day two. I'm not big on these word lists, these early worksheets, uh, they need some revision, but in any event, if you're so inclined, I will leave this here long enough for you to get a good look at it. And we will take it from there. There's just some vocabulary. All right, you can freeze frame that, I imagine. Next page. The hydrogen half cell, once again, the important thing here is that the half cell, the hydrogen half cell, is an arbitrary standard against which all of the other electrode, standard electrode potentials are measured. It is not as big a deal as it used to be, but they're going to ask you, well, here's a wire, the electrons come through the wire. They use platinum because it's unreactive and it's a good conductor. And if you coat the platinum with electrons, that's where the hydrogen ions will gain those electrons. If they're gaining electrons, GER, that's the cathode, the reduction is occurring there. So the other one would be the anode. The other one in this case, silver. I'm not too worried about that. Let's talk about the next worksheet. Here's your homework. It's gonna be this page, front and back. This one talks about calculating electrode potentials. Okay, what's the, what's the maximum voltage gonna be? Or, and if it will occur spontaneously or not? Well, the first thing's first. If it's a spontaneous reaction, you have to generate positive voltage. So if you do your uh, half reactions and add the volts together and they don't turn out to be positive, that would be non-spontaneous. That would be an electrolytic process. The other way to consider it is what we did back in redox and say, is the free element more reactive than the one it would replace if the reaction did occur? Here I have magnesium plus manganese plus two. They left off the spectator ion. This could be Mg, I'm sorry, MnNO3 taken twice or something like that. Since the spectator ion doesn't do anything, it's not uncommon for them to omit it. In the second one, you know, they, they have the chloride there. The chlorides are spectator ions. Sometimes they put it in there, here's a nitrate, and sometimes they don't here when they just, if they have the charged particles in there, if they have the ions, they've left off the spectator ions. But Mg0 up here, that's definitely the free element. All right, so let's look at this one. We can say, uh, let me get a bike sheet of paper here. I got some new markers I stopped up at school yesterday. All right, so here's Mg0 and Mn plus 2 going to Mg plus 2 and Mn. I put in the zeros for the free elements. So once again, that's the free element here. The spectator ions have been omitted. So will this reaction occur spontaneously? You can do it from table J. Is magnesium more reactive than manganese? Yes, it is. This is going to be a spontaneous reaction. Or you could say, well, if I do my half reactions, do I generate positive voltages? And since they want me to calculate it anyway, here you go. You say, all right, here's my oxidation, mag magnesium going from zero to plus two, that's moving up. And so I flip based on supplemental table J, and that turns out to be positive 2.37 volts. Just once again, just to reiterate, when I go to table J, everything is listed as a reduction. So if I'm going to make it an oxidation, I flip it around, write it backwards, and change the sign of the voltage. So here I have magnesium. Here I have magnesium plus two, plus two electrons goes to magnesium zero at negative 2.37. So if I flip it, magnesium zero goes to Mg plus two and two electrons, positive 2.37. Find the other one for manganese. It is already a reduction, plus two going to zero. Just write it down. Add your half reactions to get your voltage. Indeed it is positive 1.18. It is a spontaneous reaction. You'll notice I didn't even bother to add together the net ionic reaction. I could, I have two electrons here and two electrons here. If those electrons don't match, it doesn't really matter. You never multiply the voltage. Never multiply the voltage. Never multiply the voltage. What's that? Never multiply the voltage. So you really just need to add those two numbers together. All right, next next one. Let's do something with nonmetals. We don't often talk about the nonmetals and table J only lists out the halogens, but here, let's go to letter E. Letter E is showing us bromine and two fluoride ions going to fluorine and two bromide ions. Same process, I can do this from table J or I can do this from supplemental table six. So is bromine more reactive than fluorine? Well, I don't think there are many things more reactive than fluorine, do you? That little nasty little abusive element. So here we have fluorine up here and bromine down here. No, it's not, this is not gonna be spontaneous. Matter of fact, table J tells me no. But let's go through and calculate the voltage anyway. Here's my reduction, bromine zero going to bromine negative one, that's moving down. Here's my oxidation, fluoride negative one moving up to zero. 
go to your supplemental table. Here's your reduction. You just list it out. The bromine is right here. Bromine plus two electrons because the two Br minuses. They've already doubled it. 1.09 volts. Cool. Fluoride, you need to flip it because that's the oxidation. You say, all right, fluorine, two fluorides, you know, go to fluorine plus two electrons. That would be negative 2.87 volts. And that would be a negative 1.78 total. I'm not going to worry about my net ionic. Even though the electrons match, it doesn't really matter. So no, it's not going to be spontaneous. In fact, you would need a minimum of 1.78 volts to get this reaction to occur in an electrolytic process. Not a voltaic process. When it's not spontaneous, it's called electrolytic. All right, so the other part of your homework is picking up with what we left off yesterday. Those worksheets, they need some work, but this at least gives you the opportunity to, to work through them. So here we have one, two, three, four, five cells to draw. So let's get through one. We'll do number one together. So voltaic cell practice, here's number one. They said between iron and its corresponding iron plus two ion and aluminum and the corresponding aluminum plus three ion. So here are your two free elements, iron and aluminum. So ask yourself which of those two is more active. Go to table J and you'll find out indeed that aluminum is more active or more reactive than iron. So aluminum is going to be the anode and the anode is where oxidation occurs. So here's aluminum. It's well above iron. So we know our anode is going to be the aluminum which means our cathode is going to be the iron, and the cathode is where reduction occurs. All right, so set yourself up, make yourself a basic diagram for a voltaic cell. You have a couple beakers, you put solutions in them, you put a piece of metal here, you put a piece of metal there, those are your electrodes. You connect them with some wire, you put your voltmeter in between, and then you connect them with a U-tube, which serves as a salt bridge. And from there, it doesn't matter which side you make which. I'm going to redraw this a little bit bigger and sideways. And I hope that the camera will pick it up. I'll try to work. Okay, so give yourself a beaker. Give yourself a beaker. Some solution, some solution. An electrode, an electrode, some wire, a voltmeter, some wire and a salt bridge. All right, at this point, you need to pick which you want to be which. I don't know, I'm gonna say that this one is aluminum. So there's my aluminum zero. In solution, I need some aluminum ions aqueous. There'd be some spectator in there, maybe some three nitrates or something, it doesn't really matter. And this one is going to be my iron zero, and in solution, I've got some iron plus two aqueous. And once again, that doesn't matter what the spectator is. I labeled that this one is indeed my anode. That's where oxidation is going to occur. And this one is going to be my cathode. That's where reduction is going to occur. So electrons always go from anode to cathode, anode to cathode, anode to cathode anode to cathode. My electrons go there and they deposit themselves on the bottom of this electrode making this the negative electrode which means this one must be the positive electrode. Alright so at my anode oxidation is going to occur so my oxidation half reaction is, uh, let's see if I can get that on the page, you know what I'll write it down here. My oxidation half reaction is going to be aluminum zero goes to aluminum plus three plus three electrons and I'm going to go to supplemental table J I'm going to find aluminum I have to flip it here's aluminum plus three plus three electrons goes to aluminum so I flip it now it's going to be positive 1.66 volts All right, so I need to talk about my reduction now. But before I do that, let's see. Here's aluminum zero. It's going into solution, becoming aluminum plus three, and it sends its electrons up the wire. Through the voltmeter, does the work, turns your light bulb on, runs your cell phone, whatever. And they end up down here. 
these iron plus two ions, they find those electrons remarkably attractive and they gain them here on the surface and they start coating the cathode with a brand new layer of iron. Meanwhile, this anode is starting to look like crap as it starts to look like Swiss cheese and corrodes away. So my reduction half reaction is iron plus two, plus two electrons, goes to iron zero, and I go to my supplemental table. Da -da -da, iron plus two, there it is, plus two electrons. That to me looks like it's negative 0.45 volts. Negative 0 0.45 volts. Now, I'm going to take this half reaction, I'm gonna multiply it by three, and this half reaction, I'm gonna multiply it by two, just to get my electrons equal, I did not put the brackets around my volts because I never multiply the voltages. So, let's try and get this on the page right. Here's reduction. 3Fe plus 2s plus 6 electrons goes to 3Fe zeros. That's negative 0.45 volts. Here's my oxidation. 2 aluminum zeros go to two aluminum plus threes plus six electrons and that is positive 1.66 volts my net ionic equation is going to be three iron plus two ions plus two aluminum zeros go to three iron zeros and two aluminum plus threes and just so my arithmetic isn't bad, um, clear, 1.66 minus 0.45, and that is positive 1.21 volts, and that's the maximum voltage you're getting out of this battery. In this process, reactants are going to get used up, so this is going to go down, this is going to go down, this is going to go up, this is going to go up. The mass of the anode shrinks, the mass of the cathode increases. The concentration of the ions around the cathode is going to decrease the concentration of the ions around the anode. It's going to increase. The last thing I'm going to need to do is say, well, what's going to happen with my salt bridge? Well, anions, negative ions, they go toward the anode. And positive ions, cations, they go toward the cathode. Voila. All right, so if I go back and look at that original, see if we've lost anything here. Electron flow, got it. Oxidation and reduction half reactions, got them. Anode and cathode, got them. Charge on each electrode, got it. Ion migration through the salt bridge, got it. Write the net ionic equation to determine the maximum voltage, got it. I've even told you from your net ionic equation what's gonna happen with the concentrations and the masses. Okay, so you have one, two, three, four more to do there. That should do it for today. We will start electrolytic processes tomorrow. Have a good one.